Hey everyone, welcome to HPT Profiles. Today we are focusing on high performance teams and their impact in the health sector. And joining me today is Ben De Young, a principal provider in several sectors in HPT, but specifically today we're talking about health. Ben, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Ocean. Why has HPT been utilised by healthcare teams? Well, the health workforce around Australia is under increasing pressures as the demand for their services just continues to grow. And if we look here in Queensland, in my home state, the Chief Health Officer, their report indicates that over the last 10 years we've had population growth of 25%. As you can imagine, we can't afford to keep funding the system at that growth rate. But take that even further, over the last 11 years we've had growth of hospitalisation. So the number of times people having to go to hospital has grown on average by 70%. So the teams we're working with, whether they're in corporate or they're clinical, they're finding that they're having to be very reactive or it feels like they're being very reactive. Hospital management are needing and we have to innovate, we have to change in that type of environment. But through the HPT framework, these teams are finding they're able to take back that initiative, to focus in on the key things, the visions that they need, the goals and actions they have to do, and they also create the right team culture and environment to achieve that. And so they're becoming these high performance teams and they're getting rewarded for it. Given the need for this change, this recalibration, is the HPT model any different here? Well, no, the model itself is not any different. Um, how we implement it on a day-to-day -day basis does change a little bit, but we'll come to that in a minute. But the model itself, the, the key areas we focus on doesn't change. We're, we're very interested, of course, in that achievement side where we're getting the results and that engagement side and how we support each other to create the environment for us to get those results. Okay, so tell me about the achievement, the results area of this. Yeah, well those two KPIs are very similar across the industries and so we've got KPI 1 with the vision and action, making sure that we're all clear on what's important, what we've got to do and prioritise, who's going to do it and how we're going to do it. So the team's very focused on getting those goals. The second one of course is about performance reporting and within health we find this is one we actually put a little bit more attention into because that demand we talked about earlier, that increased demand takes up our time so you can imagine our clinical teams in particular are just focused on their patients which means that we sometimes lose sight of our key goals and reporting on them and we're not tracking them. And so we really make sure that the data walls are embedded well with these teams. And that allows us to keep a constant focus on where we're going, both in terms of the key actions, but also the environment, the culture, the behaviours we're expecting each other to be able to achieve that. Now, in health, of course, we have to be careful because if there's sensitive information, we want that in a secure location, but we make sure it's always accessible for our staff, so it's high visibility and people are able to regularly check in on their data walls. And the engagement, the support sector that you mentioned, explain that to me. So the support side has two KPIs as well. In KPI 3, that's all about the team leveraging their diversity. As you can imagine, some of these teams uh, have a whole lot of diversity, not just in their training. So again, if we stick with the clinical side of things, we can have a range of different clinical specialists, from nurses to doctors and allied health. And in the corporate sector, we have a range of different backgrounds as well. But remember, people bring their, their self in addition to their training, so their own personal interests and skills and personality. So we're really looking to make sure we can leverage that diversity, take the strengths that the team has as a collective and make the most out of it, and minimise any chances where they might clash. And that unfortunately sometimes creates an environment where we don't perform as well or might even lead to conflict. The fourth KPI is about work-life well-being. And that's where we're able to check in on how we're actually going. Now, again, if we go back to that demand scenario and, and use the clinical teams as a good example of this, is that it's such a dynamic environment. Everything can be going well on the ward. We can go off, finally get a chance for a cup of coffee or a tea break. It's rare, but we get it. We come back from that short break and all of a sudden everything's changed. There's been a change in the clinical status and we're all of a sudden in a high pressure environment. And so one of the little tricks and um, handy things that we do is we make sure that people are encoding what we call our check-ins and barometers as part of their meetings, but also as part of our daily check-in with each other when we're on the ward. And the reason that we do that is because for behaviour change or for me to modify my behaviour, the first thing I need to do is become aware of that. 
And we see this all the time out in the public as well, because when we're driving down, and if you've ever been driving through roadworks and you see the sign that flashes up and says, your speed is this, the reason they do that is it's because we then quickly check our speed and modify it if we need to. So if we've got teams in high pressure environments, and an emotional stressful environment where we're caring for people's health as well. And we're regularly checking in and asking how each other's going. It's the first opportunity sometimes during the day for me to check in on how I'm actually going and modify my behaviour to a more suitable one if I need to. You mentioned earlier about a difference in how corporate and clinical teams use HPT specifically in health. Tell me more about that. Well, Ocean, because of the nature and the environment which the corporate teams work in, they typically are able to use a business as usual approach that we have for our activity cycle of HPT. So yes, they're doing their regular meetings. Yes, they're communicating to each other and they're having check-ins. They're also updating their data wall. But because they're often together and they're not in a shift environment, they're able to use the business as usual model. But what we do and the modification we make for the 24-7, 365 days that the clinical staff have to work is that you'll notice in that model we have huddle meetings. And that's the little secret ingredient to help this work because, as you can imagine, we've got people who might be on night shift, we've got people who are on leave as well. So we want to have these regular huddles which help us to disperse the information and also check in on how everyone's going. So we're clear again on how we're going on an achievement and results point of view. What's the priorities for the day, the week, the month? But we're also clear on the team dynamics and how we can contribute best and be the best team member we can in terms of creating the culture to help our patients and do the best outcomes we can for them, as well as achieve our innovation and change that we need to survive in that type of environment. Ben, this is fantastic. I think HPT has a really strong influence in the health sector in Australia and beyond that, so congratulations. Thank you very much. Join us next time for an HPT profile.